Good morning, St. Peter's. We uh, are at Revelation 19 today. Um, read, take a moment, read Revelation 19. Now you'll see in the first few verses is the songs of praise. We're brought back to the heavenly throne room. Remember in chapters 4 and 5, a long time ago now, on even chapter 7, we saw the throne room. We're brought back there and we see God's people um, with a crescendo of praise singing songs of wondrous praise to him because all evil has finally been defeated and uh, taken out um, there's wonderful praise language in chapters uh, chapter 19 in verses 1 to, to 8 and underneath all of that is uh, a promise or what another word for it is a covenant um, and a, the picture of all that promise and covenant is the great wedding feast um, now we have God's people, um, the bride, the wedding of the lamb and the bride has made herself ready, fine linen, bright and clean, was given to her to wear. Um, it's the wedding supper of the lamb and the true words of God. John, you'll notice in verse 10, he can't help but fall in worship. It's so glorious. And then in verse 10 it says, don't do it. I'm a fellow servant with you and your brothers who hold on to the testimony of Jesus worship God alone. It's almost as if John is saying, there's so much temptation in the world to worship other things. I too cannot help it. But when I see glory, I'm dazzled. I worship other things. But here is a picture that we see with John in his weakness. We are also reminded that we are to keep our eyes on the true Lamb of God, the one who is the bride to the God's people, um, which are dressed in white. And you know how they're dressed in white? If you notice in verse 8, Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. It's the people who have persevered in worshipping God uh, and loving God and loving others throughout the world. Um, and they're vindicated in the end. There's a picture of the end and of their vindication. And then we see a rider on a white horse, verses 11 to 14. Listen to this. With justice he judges, and his eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. And on, in his name, he has a name written on him which no one else but himself knows. He's dressed in a robe, dripped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. Here we have a picture, and out of his mouth comes a sharp sword. It's a picture, remember from chapters 1 to 2, we have this picture of Jesus. Uh, the blazing fire and the sharp sword that comes out of the mouth. In the Jewish tradition of the Messiah, the Messiah was seen as one who would come and judge the nations and who would uh, execute God's rule. Uh, and who would execute final and full justice. Here is the picture of Jesus, the King and the Messiah. And that's why it says on his robe is written this, King of Kings, verse 16, and Lord of Lords. All the army, and notice it's a, it's a war. I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and the armies gathered together to make war against the rider and his horses and his army. His army are God's people. But, of course, this, all this war imagery is not meant to show us that it's about violence or it's about coercion or about the sense of an army or a war in that sense. But it says the beast was captured and with him the false prophet uh, and with the signs that he deluded, he was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur and they were all killed. How we are to conquer is actually through being conquered in this world. It's this ironic notion of being overcome. And that's why at the end of each Letter to the seven churches in chapters 1 to 5, it said, Remember, to the one who overcomes, I will give the tree of life. And in chapters 11 and 12, it had the church that was overcome and they were conquered. The same word, they were conquered by the beast and by the world. And that is, Jesus is showing us that here, he is the one who overcomes and conquers in the end. He is the one who vindicates us. Because in being conquered by the world, Jesus himself is the one who dies on the cross and the one who was raised to new life and God vindicates him after three days um, and shows that he was in the right. And so Jesus conquers by being conquered uh, and being the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And those who follow in his footsteps are his army, his people who are dressed in white, and they conquer by being conquered. And they serve and they love God and love others. And so they sing praise in verses 1 to 10. Um, in the knowledge that God will finally, fully and decisively rid the world of all evil. This is it for today. Uh, tomorrow we get into the thousand years thing uh, in Revelation 20. I better go feed this dog. He's barking.
She's barking. See you then.